I'm very bullish on both the, the metals going forward as, as you are, but the other side of that coin is it's really being dollar bearish uh, right. or fiat currency fiat. bearish. Yeah. Because that's I mean, the issue. It's a, it's a fight of the currencies to see which is the worst or the which, which is going to be the worst, first one to collapse. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, some big picture analysis. I mean, you know, move away from the markets and move away as to, you know, the way things are moving and evolving. Uh, how do you see the financial system, you know, changing? I mean, l let's be honest here. Most banks are insolvent. Right. Uh, they're way too over leveraged. Right. I don't think there are enough government resources to bail yeah. out banks if there's another layman collapse, but right. you know, any one of a number of potential candidates, including right. countries, could be the next layman. Yeah. Uh, how do you see this evolving? Well, I've always believed, and I believe this as a chartered accountant, how can you be levered 20 to 1? You have 5 cents of capital supporting a dollar of paper assets. And everybody knows that any paper asset could move 2 or 3% in a day, anything. It could be a government bond, it could be a Spanish bond or Italian bond, which will move 2 and 3% negative in a day. Uh, it could be a mortgage security, it could be the stock market, it could be a commodity. Why would you ever let yourself be levered 20 to 1? And I just think that we grew into this, you know, we created the Fed in 19, 1913. Banks found ways, they got comfortable with the system, found ways of leveraging themselves and keep increasing the leverage all the time, always on the understanding that the situation would remain normal. <laughs> well, the situation isn't normal anymore. We have these violent upheavals in the credit markets as we went through the, um, the lending crisis in 08. And uh, I see now that whenever you think of the bank's strongest assets, they used to be mortgages and sovereign risk. <laughs> well. Those might be the weakest assets these days, particularly if, as I think about a, a European bank owning sovereign risk. And um, the banks kept expanding because they wanted to have this great return on capital. And the only way to get more return on capital was to use more leverage. And I, I think we just wrote an article on it today. So well, what do you think people in Italy and Spain are doing with the money in their banks? As what they did in Greece, Iceland, Ireland. They all started, it's all well documented, they took the money out of the banks. Hmm. The governments have to come in and fund the banks. And it's happened all over the world. And the best example I can give to, to for example, Americans or people who think their banking system is secure, I mean, every Friday night in the U.S. we have bank failure night. And I look at one statistic. I look at the deposits that each of these banks that failed has and how much the FDIC had to pony up to get someone to buy it. We already know they lost the first five cents, otherwise they wouldn't be bankrupt. And then the FDIC... Assuming only a 20 to 1 leverage. 20 to 1 A lot leverage, of these yeah. banks were much they, higher than they that. They might be a lot higher than that. And then the FDIC ha typically has to come in with 25 cents in the dollar of the deposits. And I just say, oh my God, they were, they lost their capital six times over. Yeah. Like it's a staggering number and it happens week after week after week. Same kind of... Um, uh, reference of numbers of the losses versus the deposits. You know, it's interesting you're talking about the FDIC and covering these losses and 25% of the assets uh, missing. And you mentioned, but you know, looking at it from a chartered accountant point of view, I'm not a chartered accountant, but I am a trained banker. And I learned banking in the 1960s uh, from a, a big New York bank. And I was taught by guys who had lived and worked through the Great Depression. And back in the 60s, if a bank was leveraged at six or seven times, eight at most. That was right. considered prudent and normal. Right. In 2007, I did an analysis of Citibank. It was leveraged at 40 to 1, right. and that didn't include its off-balance sheet, you know, special purpose vehicles, and that, which maybe doubled it to 80 to right. 1. Yeah. We have central banks around the world uh, leveraged at 50 to 1 or higher. Right. It, it, it's a train wreck coming? It's a train wreck coming.